Can you build a well-rounded three watch collection for $500? Well, Joma Shop gave me and a couple of my friends $500 in store credit to give it a shot. Let's see how we did. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. And one of the things that's always fascinating to me is the idea of a three watch collection. Normally on this channel, I review watches that are $500 or less, but what if you actually wanted to build an entire collection of watches for $500? Well, that's something I think you can definitely do, especially with a site like Joma Shop, who is the sponsor of this video. Again, they provided $500 in store credit to buy these watches so that I could get them in for review. But if you're interested in any of these free watches or getting your hands on any of the other great deals that they have, I'll leave links to them down below in the description. Joma Shop is a shop that I have used personally in the past. I really love them for their selection and their prices. They have a ton of very interesting watches, a lot of ones that you won't necessarily see from other sites and their prices are great. Now, I live in Japan where I can typically find Japanese watches very easily and very affordably, but I've even bought a watch from Citizen from Joma Shop because they had a better price than I could find here in Japan for it. And I also love that they ship internationally, so living in Japan, they're one of my go-to places for buying things like Swiss watches, which often will be much more expensive here in Japan. Anyways, big thanks to them for making this video possible. Again, make sure you check them out in the links down below. So every once in a while here on the channel, I do a live show with Shane from Relative Time and Alton from Half Past Blog. And on our last live show, we actually purchased these watches live with help from people down in the comments and in the chat. So if you're interested in seeing how we decided to purchase these three watches, I'll leave a link to the live show as well. You can watch the replay and follow along as we made these decisions. One of the things that we did is we allowed people in the audience to vote on a couple of types of watches that we had to include in the collection. And that was that we had to get an aviation watch, we had to get a GMT watch, and we had to get a watch that did not have a blue or black or white dial, so something more interesting than that. And once you see the watches we got in our collection, you're gonna see that we weren't able to quite meet all three of those requirements. So with the audience's permission, we offered to do something a little bit crazy in exchange for dropping one of the requirements. But once we were able to do that, I think we were able to put together a pretty cool little three watch collection full of watches that maybe you don't typically see or think of. And again, that's one of the things that I really love about Joma Shop because they have such a huge selection. A lot of these watches are ones that you're not gonna see on other watch channels that aren't gonna be recommended that often but they're still very solid watches and it makes for a very interesting collection that in the end, I think really meets its purpose. The three watches that we wound up going with was the Alpina Star Timer Quartz, the Invicta Pro Diver 1953, and the Seiko SPC 251P1. So let's jump in and take a look at each one of these watches individually really quick. And then at the end, I wanna wrap this up and talk about how they would function as a three watch collection. Starting with that Alpina Star Timer. This Alpina Star Timer Quartz Aviation watch that we picked up is definitely the simplest of the three watches that we got, but it also has arguably the strongest pedigree and heritage of the three. This watch is a little bit on the larger side at 42 millimeters in diameter with 50 millimeter lug to lug, but due to the lightweight and the thin profile that this quartz movement allows this watch to have, it actually doesn't wear that big at all. It feels really comfortable on the wrist. And I know there's a lot of people that kind of look down on quartz watches. They immediately write them off and they're not too interested in them, but I think there's something to be said for a really well-made, well-built quartz watch. If you took this exact watch and changed it over to an entry-level Swiss automatic movement, it would easily sell for four to five hundred dollars. It's got a sapphire crystal, a hundred meters of water resistance, and a nicely finished black PVD case. The dial is incredibly legible with a modern take on the Type A Flieger layout with a number of very cool accents to it. The inverted triangle at 12 o'clock is a mainstay of Type A Flieger designs, but in this case, it's actually an applied Alpina logo. That triangle with a circle in it is meant to represent the Matterhorn Mountain in Switzerland, which inspired Alpina's name. It's a subtle and almost unnoticeable nod to their Swiss heritage, and also adds just a touch of depth to an otherwise pretty flat printed dial. Likewise, the large rectangular indexes at three, six, and nine are also applied. And rather than broad sword-shaped hands that you often find on Flieger watches, this has very delicate, thin, leaf-shaped hands. 
This combined with the really cool second hand that features a red triangle counterbalance and a long white tip really helped to give the watch its own distinct and unique twist on the classic Flieger design. It's modern, it's elegant, it's interesting, and it's still just as legible as your classic Flieger. And while this is a quartz watch, the ticking second hand is very well aligned. It pretty much hits every single index dead on around the dial. And while I do prefer the smooth sweep of an automatic watch, there's something really satisfying about a well-aligned quartz second hand. And of course, quartz brings a level of accuracy and convenience that automatic watches just really can't touch. The only thing that really bugs me about this watch is that they went with 21 millimeter lugs, which means it's gonna be very difficult to find alternative straps for this watch. And while the khaki colored NATO strap really matches the character of the watch and is very comfortable, as well as being well constructed, NATO straps aren't for everybody, and I'm sure a lot of people would like to switch this over to a nice high quality leather strap. So I wish they would have gone with a more standard 20 or 22 millimeter lug size. The other unfortunate thing about this watch is that the loom is pretty weak. You can kind of excuse that because this isn't a dive watch, but I found that in real world usage, you're not going to get much visibility after about 15 minutes or so in the dark. And this seems to be a common thing on a lot of entry level Swiss watches. Alpina is a great Swiss brand with a long heritage and history. In their past, they have produced a lot of watches for various branches of various militaries throughout the world. And I think that heritage is on full display in this very cool little affordable quartz watch. Next, we're going to check out the Invicta Pro Diver 1953. Before Pagani Design, before Steel Dive, before San Martin, Invicta was the brand that everybody was turning to when they were looking for a decent quality Rolex homage with an automatic movement for under $100. Many people consider the Invicta Pro Diver to be the king in this price range. Now, in recent years, many of those Chinese brands have surpassed Invicta when it comes to specs for the price. But rather than just give up that market, Invicta came out with the 1953 Pro Diver a few years back, dipping way into the vintage territory, creating an homage to the very first Rolex Submariner ever made. And I gotta say, for under $100, this Invicta Pro Diver still offers a lot of value. You are getting a Seiko NH35 automatic movement. You're getting a decent level of finishing and build quality with a comfortable, solid link bracelet, the full 200 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown, and this feels like it has a much better build quality than anything I've seen from Pagani Design in this price range. Now you are still getting just a pressed clasp and a mineral crystal with some pretty pathetic loom that scored one on my J-score system, but really should be a zero because the hands themselves were completely invisible at the end of one hour. You could still barely make out the markers, but if you can't read the hands, you can't read the time. But again, at the price, this is kind of to be expected, and I'm not really going to fault it too much for that. The vintage design, while well, not original, comes across very clear and strong. It's just a really fun watch to wear. And Invicta has done a little bit of a twist in including a bicolor bezel with actually a lot of different color options. We decided to go with the Coke bezel version getting a red and black bezel that I think looks really cool, but I was also kind of leaning towards an orange and black bezel, and they even had a green and black bezel. And that combined with this very retro look is a lot more originality than you're gonna get out of a lot of these Chinese homage brands. And these watches are available from reputable retailers like Joma Shop, so they're much easier to get your hands on than ordering direct from China. Overall, this still feels like a very sturdy, great looking daily wear watch with a comfortable 40 millimeter diameter and 20 millimeter lugs and that rock solid Seiko NH35 automatic movement. Now this is a watch that does not have a date on it. So by using the NH35, you are gonna have a ghost date position on the crown. So minor bummer there. And one last positive, I was unexpectedly impressed with the bezel action on this watch. It's actually pretty good. It's got a nice clicky feel with no back play feels on par with what I've seen from a lot of micro brands that cost two or three times as much as this watch. All in all, I think this would make a great addition to anybody who's trying to build a watch collection on a budget. Now, before we take a look at that crazy and gorgeous Seiko everything watch, quick plug for my t-shirt shop, check out justthewatch.com where you can get this t-shirt that I'm wearing here, which is a really cool Casio Royale design that I put together along with a lot of other original watch themed t-shirt designs. Pick one up, help support the channel. Okay, let's check out that Seiko. 
Sometimes watch product shots really don't do a watch justice, and that's definitely the case here. This watch looks way better in person than it does in stock photos. The cutouts and finishing on the dial give you a great amount of depth, and when combined with all of the intricate printing and the many, many hands that this watch has, you're left with a dial that is both visually stunning and somewhat overwhelming. It took me quite some time to figure out exactly how all of this works or even what this watch offers. But in terms of functionality, you're getting a perpetual calendar, a chronograph, and an alarm that can alternately be used as a second time zone. The way that works is that the alarm section of the clock is basically a separate clock in the six o'clock subdial. And Seiko's intention is for you to manually synchronize that clock with the main time on the dial. And then in one of the modes, you can select a time for the alarm to go off. But since that little clock at six o'clock is independently settable, you can also set it to any time you want. It doesn't have to be lined up with the main time. The perpetual calendar is also a slightly confusing, but very interesting and very useful complication that's on this watch what appears to be a very long double-sided second hand on the main hand is actually a dual purpose pointer. On one side you have an arrow for use in the chronograph and on the other side you have a moon and that little moon functions as a pointer date complication. When the chronograph is not in use it will point to the current day of the month and when you press the top pusher the moon will first swing around to indicate the current month and then the second push will tell you how many years it's been since the last leap and since the watch knows which month it is and how many days are in each month and since it knows whether or not we're currently in a leap year that means that the watch is capable of keeping the calendar in sync on its own without you having to do any monthly adjustments until february 28th 2100 now, enabling all of these features is the Seiko 7T86 quartz movement. And because it's quartz, it's both hyper accurate and incredibly thin, coming in at right on 10 millimeters. Style-wise, this looks like a very elegant dress watch, particularly in the case design with the subtle bevels and a black jewel-like accent on the crown. But despite the delicate looks, this watch does feature a sapphire crystal and 50 meters of water resistance. You could definitely wear this as a daily wear watch and not only a special occasion watch that so you really have to baby. The bracelet is of decent quality, featuring solid links, but it does have hollow end links and a stamped clasp. And on this very thin, dressy clasp, you're not getting any micro-adjust. And while that bracelet is very comfortable and I was able to get a decent fit despite the lack of micro adjust, this is the kind of thing I would probably wear more on a leather strap and kind of use it more as a dress watch. Overall, this one really surprised me and I think it's just an excellent example of how awesome a quartz watch can be, both by enabling a level of complication and functionality that would be cost prohibitive on a mechanical watch for 99.9% .9 of the people in the world and allowing you to have all of those complications on a watch that's incredibly thin at only 10 millimeters, making it one of the most interesting dress watches I think you can really get your hands on. So these are three very solid, very interesting watches, but how would they function as a collection? Would these three watches be enough to get you by for everything that you need? Let's evaluate it from that perspective. For me, a good three watch collection means that you have a watch that you can wear in any situation. Whether you're going swimming in the ocean or going to a job interview or a wedding or just hanging out with your friends, you wanna be able to have a watch that suits any occasion for your life. And for me personally, I think these three watches would pretty much have me covered. These are all high quality, affordable watches that are interesting and each has their own unique personality. Obviously that Seiko with the perpetual calendar would probably fill the place of being my dress watch. My day job here in Japan is as a missionary pastor. So the Seiko would be my go-to watch for Sunday mornings when I have to get up in front of people and preach. And throughout the week, I think I would love being able to alternate between the Alpina Star Timer and that Invicta Pro Diver. Probably the Alpina would be my choice for a day-to-day -day watch just because it's so comfortable and because I really like aviation watches. I like that style and I feel like it's just a good match for my personality and the style of clothes I typically wear. But I could also see myself easily picking up the Invicta from time to time to mix things up. And if I were gonna go to the beach or go swimming, this would definitely be the one that I would take with that 200 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. Plus it being the least expensive of the three watches, I'd have the most peace of mind taking this one into the water and into those kind of more dangerous situations. 
All right, so that's our collection conundrum take on a three watch $500 collection. Again, big thanks to Joma Shop as well as to Shane and Alton for helping me put all of this together. Now, after the show was over, we kind of drew lots to see who was gonna get to keep which watch. Uh, so the Seiko is gonna be shipped over to Alton and the Invicta Pro Diver is gonna be going over to Shane. So be sure you are checking out their channels. If you haven't subscribed to either of them, definitely recommend it. They're both great channels, uh, but they will be doing full reviews of those two watches. Uh, I think when they get them. And if you watch the show, you know that there's going to be a fourth watch that the three of us are going to review in order to drop the requirement to include a watch that has a, an interesting colored dial. Uh, we agreed to review a fourth watch. The audience was gracious enough to give us that. So that review will also be coming both on my channel as well as on Shane and Alton's in the future. So keep an eye out for that. I think it'll be kind of fun and is definitely not the kind of watch you typically see on any of our channels. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.